Malaysians must strengthen bonds of brotherhood, racial unity. Police seized 36 million ringgit worth of contraband. Good afternoon, happy Malaysia Day. You're watching Updates at Noon with me, I'm Jessica Lee. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Fadila Yusof has called on all Malaysians to strengthen the bonds of brotherhood and the solidarity of the various races in the country to fully appreciate and celebrate the formation of Malaysia with a sense of pride and national spirit. The strong spirit of brotherhood could further strengthen national integration with the true meaning of independence between Peninsula, Sabah and Sarawak. Now, in a Malaysia Day message on his Facebook page today, the Deputy Premier also called on the people to remember the services and sacrifices of the first Prime Minister of Malaysia, the late Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra Al Haj, and the top leaders and figures of Sabah and Sarawak in making the formation of Malaysia a success. He said all Malaysians must appreciate everything that the country has through a spirit of togetherness because the strength and progress of the country are the result of a common struggle. He added that Malaysia Day should be a platform to integrate Sabah, Sarawak and the peninsula towards a more viable development agenda for the sake of the survival of the beloved nation of Malaysia. The national level Malaysia Day celebration will be held at the Unity Stadium in Kuching tonight. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said that Suzuki Motor Corporation plans to increase its investment in motorcycle manufacturing in Malaysia and strengthen its cooperation with local technical partner KMSB Motors Sindra Berhad. In a Facebook post, the Prime Minister said the increased investment and cooperation intent was personally informed by Suzuki Motor Corporation President Toshihiro Suzuki in a courtesy visit that took place in Putrajaya. The meeting was also attended by Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry, MITI Secretary General, Datuk Sri Isham Isha, Malaysian Investment Development Authority, or MIDA, Chief Executive Officer, Datuk Wira Arham Abdul Rahman, and KMSB Motor Syndrome Berhad Group Executive Chairman, Ahmad Faiz Tansri Yahya. With the cooperation, the Premier expressed hope that Malaysia will continue to be the choice of investors from Japan. The Malaysia International Halal Showcase, or MIHAS 2023, has surpassed its sales target of 2.5 billion ringgit. Now, last year, the world's largest halal event secured 2.3 billion ringgit in sales. The Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation or Ma Trade Chairman Datuk Sri Rizal America Nine American said he did not rule out that the overall sales might hit three billion ringgit by the conclusion of the four-day showcase. Salah satu daripada komponen penting dalam MIHAS ni ya, adalah untuk menjadikan ini platform kepada usaha-pengusaha tempatan untuk mencari ruang dan peluang untuk menebusi pasaran luar. Jadi kalau berlakunya kelembapan dari segi permintaan-permintaan dalam perdagangan dunia sekarang ni, dan halal industri dilihat salah satu daripada sektor yang mungkin boleh menyumbang kepada peningkatan ekspor negara secara keseluruhan. This year's showcase placed several emphasis on the agenda of helping local and international players look to innovation and sustainable initiatives to spearhead steady growth for the halal economy. Now, the government will announce a solution to the issue of non-functioning telecommunications towers in Sarawak by the end of the month. Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fadil said discussions with telecommunication companies were underway to find the best solution to the issue. Insyaallah, saya harap uh, dalam masa sebelum hujung bulan, sekiranya semua berjalan dengan lancar, akan ada satu pengumuman baik ya, untuk uh, menyelesaikan dengan uh, 
kita harap secara menyeluruh masalah naked tower yang telah lama membelenggu rakan-rakan di Sarawak. Meanwhile, farming said the people in Sarawak now had many options to overcome the issue of poor internet access, including using Starlink satellite devices. Now, the police have busted a cigarette and liquor smuggling syndicate following the arrest of 10 men and seizure of over 36 million ringgit worth of contraband in three raids in Kajang. Security and Public Order Division Director Datuk Sri Hazani Ghazali said that intelligence gathering by the Wildlife Crime Bureau along with the Cheras General Operations Force had revealed two illegal liquor processing labs. It led to the arrest of 10 men, including five foreigners, and the seizure of untaxed 73,800 cartons of cigarettes and 24,573 cartons of liquor. He said liquor processing machines and equipment, along with three vehicles with an estimated value of 395,575 ringgit, were also seized. The suspects have been remanded to facilitate investigations under Section 135, Subsection 1 of the Customs Act 1967 and the Immigration Act 1959-63. Twenty sixteen Brussels bombers sentenced to jail. That and more coming up in the foreign segment. North Korea's state-run broadcaster KRT on Saturday reported of leader Lim Jong-un's visit to a Russian fighter jet factory as part of a visit Washington and its allies fear could strengthen Russia's military in Ukraine and bolster Pyongyang's missile program. During the visit, which took place on Friday, Kim met test pilots at a fuselage assembly shop and got on a Su-57 stealth fighter jet to hear a detailed explanation of the technical specifications. The North Korean leader was also seen climbing onto an airliner produced by the plant to learn about its performance and watching the test flight of a Su-35 fighter jet in photographs broadcast. State media said Kim expressed admiration for Russia's aviation technology undergoing rapid development and outpacing potential threats. The North Korean leader's stay is expected to continue on Saturday, possibly with a visit to the eastern city of Valdivostok and a naval base. A Belgian court on Friday handed out sentences ranging up to life in prison to eight men for the 2016 bombings in Brussels, ending the country's largest ever criminal trial. The suicide bombings on the 22nd of March 2016 at Brussels' main airport and on the metro system killed 32 people and were claimed by the Daesh group. French citizen Salah Abdesalam and Belgian Moroccan Mohamed Abrini already sentenced to life in jail by France for a 2015 massacre in Paris were the highest profile of six culprits found guilty of murder in July. Abrini, who was one of the designated bombers but decided not to blow himself up at the last moment, was given a 30-year jail term. The court ruled out to not give Abdesalam an additional term after he was sentence in Belgium to 20 years in 2018 over a shootout. The bombings near the headquarters of both NATO and the EU were part of a wave of attacks claimed by Daesh group in Europe. The hundreds of travellers and transport staff were maimed and seven years on, many victims, relatives and rescuers remain traumatised by the biggest peacetime attack in Belgium. Dominican President Luis Abinader on Thursday announced the closure of the country's border with Haiti, escalating a diplomatic row over access to a shared river. Now, since the beginning of the month, the Dominican Republic's government has complained about Haitian plans to build a canal on the Shed Massacre River, saying it violates several border treaties between the two nations. 
From Friday morning, the entire border of the Dominican Republic, land, sea and air will be closed for as long as necessary. Abineda described the construction of the canal aimed at providing water to Haitian farmers as a provocation this government is not going to accept. Haiti fired back saying it was within its right to make use of the shared river in line with the 1929 agreement. The Caribbean neighbours have long had tense relations heightened by an influx of migrants from poverty and violence-stricken Haiti into the wealthier Dominican Republic. Now, as part of the canal dispute, the Dominican government on Monday suspended visas for Haitians. Last week, it closed the Da Jabon border crossing, one of the most important where a cross-frontier market takes place twice a week. Now, Haiti, among the world's poorest nations, has been gripped by years of economic and political crisis. Thousands of Haitians fled the country seeking work in the more prosperous Dominican Republic, which has toughened its immigration policy in response. Dominican authorities are building a 160-kilometer concrete wall along the 380-kilometer border with Haiti to keep out undocumented migrants. Still coming sports, Neymar makes a superstar debut at Al Hilal. Stay with us. Now, the Malaysian Football League or MFL has confirmed that the Malaysia League or M League competition will be changed to follow the Asian Football Confederation or AFC calendar beginning 2024. Now, its Chief Executive Officer, CEO Dato Stuart Ramalingam, said the MFL was still in discussion with local clubs to initiate the change from next year to ensure that the M League transfer window is aligned with international leagues. Explaining further, he said it will also standardise the rest period and ensure that the national team, the junior team and the AFC Cup participants perform well. Now, Stewart also said that the transition means the league will begin in 2024 and end in 2025. He added that the MFL would make an announcement next month after discussions with clubs and stakeholders are complete. Now, Stewart also said that they would ensure that the new season will begin without any issues issue of unpaid salaries and that action will be taken against any team regarding the issue if they fail to resolve the salaries before the end of this season. Now, Sabah FC failed to take home advantage in the first leg of the Malaysia Cup quarterfinal against Perak FC as they drew two all at the Lika Stadium last night. The Rhino squad had the perfect start when striker Darren Locke headed in a goal past T. Sahiswaran in the third minute. But the visitors got one back just six minutes later as import player Luciano Guaychocci's powerful shot beat goalkeeper Kairol Fami Chipmat and the score remained level until the break. Nasaba took the lead again in the first minute of the second half as Raymond Machado headed in a pass from Sadil Ramdan. But the boss Garo squad restored parity once again in the 54th minute thanks to a strike from one Zek Haikal, one Nor. The second leg of the quarterfinal will take place on the 25th of September at the Perak Stadium in Ipoh. The Neymar made his Saudi Pro League debut with Al Hilal yesterday and helped his side to a thundering 6-1 bashing of crosstown rivals Al Riyadh. Although Neymar did not score himself, Brazil's all-time top scorer was key in a couple of goals after he came off the bench at the 63rd minute. Serbian striker Alexander Mitrovic opened the scoring with a half-hour penalty and Yasser Al-Sharani doubled their lead in the extra time before the interval thanks to a Sergei Milinkovic Savic assist. In the second half, with the score unchanged after the hour mark, Al Riyadh manager Yannick Ferreira made some changes, which Al Hilal manager Jorge Jesus matched by bringing in Neymar and Nasser Al Dausari. Now, the latter wasted no time to increase their lead four minutes later. Neymar provided an assist as Malcolm made it 4 0. 
Salim Al Dawsari scored two quick fire goals with a penalty in the 87th minute and another goal in extra time to complete the route. Al Riyad managed to score a consolatory goal late in the match through substitute Ali Al Zakan. Now, the result puts Al Hilal on top of the table with 16 points, just one ahead of second place Al Itihad, while Al Riyad remain in 16th place with four points. Now, Everton have been sold to the firm 777 Partners. Now, the struggling Premier League club said on Friday, with the U.S. private equity firm taking over from Farhad Moshiri in a deal, reports said, was worth more than £550 million. The Miami-based investment fund said it had signed an agreement with British-Iranian billionaire Moshiri to acquire his 94.1% stake in the club. Now, the deal is expected to be closed by the end of the year. The firm 777 Partners has a number of clubs in its portfolio, including Italian side Genoa and Belgian team Standard Liège, while they also have stakes in La Liga Club Sevilla and Australian A-League side Melbourne Victory. Everton's most recent figures showed a fifth straight year of losses, £44.7 million for the 2021-2022 season, with their total loss over that period amounting to over £430 million. Under Premier League rules, teams can make a maximum loss of £105 million over three years, although special allowances were made for the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Everton narrowly avoided relegation from the top flight in each of the last two seasons and are currently 18th in the standings without a win in four games this season. In tennis news, elite women's tennis returns to China for the first time in four years at Guangzhou next week after the WTA ended a boycott over concerns about Peng Shuai. Now, the women's tour had been widely praised for suspending its tournaments in the Asian nation after Peng said in a now-deleted 2021 social media post that a senior former Chinese government official had sexually assaulted her. Peng then briefly disappeared from public view and the former doubles number one later denied making the accusation, sparking an international outcry over her safety. Now, China was central to the WTA Tour's aggressive expansion into Asia and it had staged nine tournaments with a total prize purse of $30.4 million there in 2019, which was its last full year of operations in the country. Now, this year, it will hold tournaments in Guangzhou and Ningbo before the season's final WTA 1000 event in Beijing. World number one Arena Sabalenka and world number two Iga Xiontek led the entry list for the China Open in Beijing, with all but three players in the current top 50 set to make an appearance. The tournaments will also be held in Jingzhou, Hong Kong, Nanjiang, and Zhuhai next month. Now, Ferrari led both practice sessions for the Singapore Formula One Grand Prix on Friday, with Charles Leclerc fastest in the first and Carlos Sainz in the second, as Red Bull's record unbeaten run appeared in danger of ending. Runaway Championship leader Max Verstappen, chasing an unprecedented 11th win in a row, was third in Session 1, but only eighth in the second and one place behind teammate Sergio Perez, last year's winner. The Red Bull have won the last 15 races and are expected to be fighting for pole again later today, but they had already identified Ferrari as their major rivals coming into the weekend. The Italian team lived up to expectations. Leclerc lending a one two in the late afternoon and the positions then reversed later on. Now, George Russell was third for Mercedes in session two with Aston Martin's Fernando Alonso fourth. Seven times world champion Lewis Hamilton was fifth fastest for Mercedes with McLaren's Lando Norris sixth. 
In cycling news, Italian Alberto Danise edged out compatriot Filippo Ganna in a bunch sprint to win stage 19 of the Vuelta a España. Now, Esep Kuz maintained his overall lead. Now, Kuz remains ahead of his Jumbo Visma teammates, Jonas Vingard, who is 17 seconds behind, and Primoz Roglic, who is a further 51 seconds behind after the trio ended safely in the pack. American Cus will be expected to see out a maiden Grand Tour title in today's Healy 208-kilometer ride from Manzanares, El Real to Guadarrama and Sunday's traditional procession into Madrid. The Jumbo are bidding to become the first team to secure a podium clean sweep at the Vuelta since 1966. The glory for Cus this weekend would also wrap up a Grand Tour hat-trick in 2023 for the Dutch team after Roglic's gyro win and Vingard's second straight Tour de France triumph. Now, the finish to Friday stage in Iskar was marred by a crash in the final kilometre for points classification leader Caden Groves, which split the peloton in two. Now, the Australian appeared unheard but was unable to push for his third stage win of the race. Now, technological advancement has gone a long way in assisting humans in daily life routines to smashing world records to recovering long-lost relative. Let's dive further in our selection of colourful stories from around the world or from the world around us. Students from Switzerland have smashed a world record for acceleration with their hand-built electric racing car. The vehicle accelerated from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 0.956 seconds over a distance of 12.3 meters. So we aimed uh, from the beginning to go below one second in acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. And we managed to achieve that on the 1st of September. We managed to reach 0.956 seconds. Uh, we actually did it three times in a row, so we were quite confident that the car can do it uh, consistently. The car named Mythen was built by members of the Academic Motorsports Club Zurich, or AMZ, made up of students from ETH Zurich and the Lucerne University of Applied Sciences and Arts. The world record was confirmed by Guinness World Records, beating the previous world record of 1.461 seconds set in September 2022 by a team from their friendly rivals, the University of Stuttgart, by more than a third. The car completed the record-breaking run three times times on the 1st of September on the military airfield in Dubendorf. Now, at the wheel was friend of the team, Kate Mugetti, selected to drive the car as she is small in stature and lightweight. Now, Rosette explained one of the biggest challenges is producing the huge amount of stable power output needed. From the kind of cars that we usually build that can drive continuously at the racing pace for at least 20 minutes, uh, this was something completely different. It just bursts. Everything ha has to happen within one second and it has to be able to withstand that. So it's quite a different concept uh, overall, especially the aerodynamics that was completely new. Mythen's components, from the printed circuit boards to the chassis and the battery, were developed by the students and optimized for their function. Lightweight carbon and aluminum honeycomb materials means the race car attains a svelte weight of approximately 140 kilograms. The student built four-wheel hub motors and a special powertrain give the vehicle 240 kilowatts of power, or around 326 horsepower. Traditional four Formula 1 cars rely heavily on aerodynamics, typically achieved through rear or front wings that generate downward force at higher speeds. Now, in pursuit of ensuring robust traction right from the outset, the AMZ team came up with a unique solution. They built a specialized mechanism akin to a vacuum cleaner that holds the vehicle down to the ground by suction. This, this, this 
humility and honor drove every single one of us to go beyond the call of duty to do our best to 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 get this this boy home and uh, it, it must be one of the most satisfying things that the team has done to date Maritime archaeologist Professor Timmy Gambin led the team of approximately 15 people to recover the remains of an American airman whose plane went down off the coast of Malta during World War II. U.S. Army Air Force Sergeant Irving R. Newman died at the age of 22 in May 1943. His aircraft, a B-24D Liberator, was part of a bombing mission over Reggio di Calabria Harbour, Italy. But the plane encountered engine problem and barely made it back to Malta, crashing into the waters near Bengasha Point. The B-24 was hit by flag over Sicily and developed further engine trouble in her other engines. And despite the pilot doing his best to land on Malta, he ended up ditching the plane on the sea of Marsaglox Bay. And out of the 10 crew on board, nine were rescued by the RAF rescue launch and one went down with the plane. The team uses sophisticated 3D mapping in their effort to recover the remains of Sergeant Newman. In 2016, Gambin's team used sight scan sonar technology to discover the wreck, generating a visual representation of the ocean floor. Subsequently, an autonomous underwater vehicle equipped with sonar was used to chart the wreckage, while photogrammatic images were used to construct a comprehensive 3D model. Over two fieldwork seasons, Gambin's team meticulously excavated in and around the plane wreck, situated at a depth of 58 meters. The main challenge, which is you're looking for something that you know could easily be missed. You, 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 uh, once you start excavating underwater, the visibility is down to uh, to next to uh, to zero, and and you're looking for uh, items that could be you know very small. Following the recovery of human remains in 2019, Defence POW or MIA Accounting Agency, DPAA scientists, conducted anthropological analysis and the Armed Forces Medical Examiner System employed mitochondrial DNA and dental analysis to confirm the identity was indeed that of Sergeant Newman. In an announcement made on the 20th of June this year by the DPAA, Sergeant Newman has been officially accounted for. According to their website, the DPAA's mission is to achieve the fullest possible accounting for missing and unaccounted for U.S. personnel to their families and the nation. 76 minutes non-stop. Transparent and concise. Paparan komprehensif, ringkas dan padat. Saksikan Kanta 744, 744 malam. Berita perdana 8 malam. Malaysia Tonight, 8.30pm. And that's it for updates at noon. Recapping our top story to today, Malaysians must strengthen bonds of brotherhood, racial unity. Tune in to Malaysia Tonight coming up at 8.30 p.m. on Saloran Berita RTM. I'm Jessica Lee, Malaysia Madani, Teka Perpaduan Penuhi Harapan.